They call themselves medical refugees. Each year, thousands of Americans travel the country and even the world in search of an answer to the question, what is making me sick? Now some filmmakers are bringing the plight of the undiagnosed to the world. Dominic gave me this huge smile, this huge, happy smile. September 8, 2001. Sure that we had taken the the new Chitelli's five-month-old son, Dominic, is at the center of attention at a family gathering at Lagoon. Minutes after they snapped this photo, Dominic is fighting for his life. And started realizing that his lips were starting to turn blue. Um, and I pulled my phone out. I called 911. Six days later, Chris and Marie Nuccitelli pulled Dominic off life support. Doctors disagree about the baby's cause of death. The Nuccitelli's join the ranks of the undiagnosed. It always left a piece of um, doubt in my mind. That there were doubts about the couple's ability to have children in the future. And exactly six years later, the Nuccitelli's buried a baby girl named Bridget. Doctors say the Lehigh couple and thousands of other undiagnosed families deserve answers. Families want to know what this means for other family members, other children or grandchildren. And with a diagnosis and a cause, we can answer that question for families. Dr. Edward Clark is a champion of undiagnosed children, doing all he can to crack these cold cases. We have data systems, we have the genetic analytics, we have the senior physicians to be able to consider these cases. We're alone in this journey. We really are like refugees. Now Dr. Clark and others in medical care and research are lending their expertise to a documentary called Undiagnosed Medical Refugees, focused on the plight of millions of people who suffer without a diagnosis. Not knowing what it is, not knowing if you're going to live or die, it was just an eye-opener. I didn't know that world existed. What is so tragic? The documentary is the brainchild of Dr. Katja Moritz. The wife, mother, and clinical psychologist was abruptly introduced to the reality of the undiagnosed after a routine procedure. I had this excruciating pain on my sternum and the, between my shoulder blades. It was almost like I was impaled by an elephant. Moritz went through years of testing and traveling the world in search of a diagnosis. Then she asked friends Crystal Shearman and Nick Miller to produce and direct a documentary on this misunderstood issue. It's been a labor of love for the Park City filmmakers. She said she, you know, she's a puzzle. Getting to know these families has been the most special part of the journey. The morning before we left for Lagoon. Families like the Nuccitelli's. This film gives a face, it gives a presence, it gives a way to tell us the stories that most of us don't really want to go and stand up in front of a crowd and share. The film. In fact, they called the NIH the National Institutes of Hope. New research by National Institutes of Health teams and the spread of social media are all giving families hope for finding a diagnosis. Families are now taking this information and going on the internet and using blogs and, and chat rooms to a remarkably successful degree to be able to find other families who have children with the same conditions. We're still kind of hopeful. Undiagnosed, the film has also given dozens of these medical refugees a sense of community. So at the very least, to be able to come together and say, yes, I'm undiagnosed, and there are others out there who are just like me. We may not have the same disease, but we're going through the same struggle, the same medical odyssey. It means a lot to those patients. And we've shared those experiences, and it's, it's meant a lot to us to, to join with those families and be able to share our experiences with them. Six of the families featured in the documentary got some amazing news in the last few weeks. Each of their cases will be studied by teams of doctors and researchers competing for a cash prize if they can diagnose the disease or the condition afflicting the family. The competition could take up to three months and maybe it'll turn up some good news. Filmmakers hope to show the documentary at next year's Sundance Film Festival. Well, family life has certainly taken a casual turn. The latest trend in home design is an airy open floor plan where members can hang out as a group even if they're not pursuing activities together. What matters is togetherness. Lois Collins has been studying the trend for the Deseret News. Good morning, nice to have you here. Hi, thanks. So open and airy, that's, that's the way it's going to be? Yeah, and interconnected is the big thing. It's You can stand in the kitchen and talk to your kids who are a little off to the side in the living room doing their homework, or your husband might be paying bills off in another corner, but you're all sort of in an area where you're not behind closed doors away from each other. This will be, uh, this is an interesting, I'm interested in your answer to this question uh, in your research, the most important 
open space in the house. Kitchen. The kitchen. Hands down. Everybody said the kitchen. There's something about food. It's, it's part of our rituals. Are. Yeah, it's part of our rituals and we love food and we prepare it together and if we're lucky we clean up together. If some of us are lucky we get help. But it's kind of the hub of the family. If everybody's there in the hub, how do you avoid the chaos that comes with the hub while you're trying to do homework, do the checkbook? All those kinds you of things. You don't. I'm, ideally, the place is big enough that, and some of the activities are quiet. Everybody's not talking at once. So, you, but you don't. I mean, where in your family life do you really avoid the chaos at times anyway? That's it. Doesn't matter. Chaos is good. How does the living space reflect what people value? What have you found? Fewer people are going for formal dining rooms. Um, more, most people, according to a survey from a National Home Builders Association say that they want a place where they can cook meals together and they can hang out together and do that kind of thing. Um, there are fewer like long hallways with faraway rooms that are shut off, that kind of thing. It just says we want to be together. We may have a patio that opens out to the garden and that's extension of our house. You let your home reflect what you want your family life to be. All right, let's say we, we believe all that, uh, but we can't afford to remodel our house to be like that right I'm now. That what yeah. are the what do the experts say? What what can we do? Yeah, I can't afford a remodel right now and I certainly don't have that kind of home. So what they're saying you do is you don't go down to your bedroom or to your office to pay the bills. You make sure that you have little places off to the side, even small places. You can even use it you can repurpose a closet into a desk. Or you can have the kids do their homework at, at the counter in the kitchen, but you make sure that you have places, even in small spaces, where you can be together and do things together. Seems like the trend maybe could be tied back to where we're cautioned, don't have computers in rooms away from everybody with kids, have it out in the open, and now, according to research, everything's out in the open. Yeah, you don't keep everything out in the open. You know, people still need a private space. They need their own bedrooms and their private places to think and, and refuges within their home. But definitely there's a move toward more side-by-side -side conversations. There are psychologists that told me that you learn more about your kids side-by-side -side than eye-to-eye. -eye. I believe that. So. All right, Lois, thank you very much. You can read much more of Lois Collins and her articles and a great article on the single question that will tell you if a person is a narcissist or not. You can find that at national.deseretnews. Com. They've been described as the Christian Kardashians, but Victoria and Colby Koloff are using their reality TV show to promote their faith. Up next, the stars of Preacher's Daughters explain how the show has helped strengthen their relationships. And I go one-on-one -on -one with a maverick in Hollywood fighting to make sure inspiring movies for families make it to the box office.